So, um, when an Irish um, uh, group of boats went off down to Spain, they had to be able to deal with whatever came along, uh, including some other pilots known as Englishmen, <laughs> who um, were appearing on the scene and weren't at all averse to helping themselves to whatever uh, these uh, boats would have. Um, but the interesting thing about them is their mo main motive, motive of power was, believe it or not, the ropes, the, the, the rub, um, uh, oars. They were galleys. Now they had sails as well, but they didn't just rely on the, on the sail. So they had the two methods of power. And very often, according to some stories and histories, they were able, because of the fact that they had very uh, able oarsmen, were able to literally run rings around the British ships and the Spanish ships as well. And to the point where often the British and the big powers, because they were very heavy warships, you know, they were, they were, they were, they had guns and they, you know, they were not terribly maneuverable. And very often the big power ships who would be like the aircraft carriers of the day kind of thing, very well equipped for some serious battles, but not really able to chase down a bunch of these um, uh, small boats from the west of Ireland. And they wouldn't be that small, they'd be up to 100 feet in some cases, maybe between 50 and 100, uh, with the ones that would be carrying a lot of stuff. And then there would be smaller ones that would go faster and so on. But they were very, very maneuverable and um, hard to to chase down and to get much, they may get one of them, but they wouldn't get a bunch of them. So, um, and if in fact the reverse was often true, they often did take advantage of um, some large ships and they would disable them by ramming or damaging their rudders, because as you know, a ship without a rudder uh, is pretty well a, <clears throat> a death trap. So in fact, they actually were um, more adept at capturing some large um, superpower ships like the British and the French, and the, although the French weren't into it very much at the time, and the, uh, the Spanish, mostly the Spanish, the Spanish and the British. And there are some instances of uh, the O'Malley's actually bringing in uh, prizes, bringing in quite large ships. English ships and uh, Spanish ships, which make fantastic stories too. And of course they had a great time because usually they'd have a lot of rum on board and they'd have a lot of things that they would have enjoyed and of course a lot of weapons and what have you. So it was well worthwhile going out and chase those. And for that, for that reason they were often known as pirates. And that's why the, the, the pirate queen. From their perspective they weren't just traders, they weren't off uh, trading with Spain they were dangerous, they were pirates. So in, other way, in many ways, then the word pirate was a compliment in a way because they were feared. <laughs> and uh, as I said, the proof uh, was that they actually did capture quite, uh, quite, a, quite a few. Not enough to do any damage to, any, to the British or the, the Spanish, but enough to be a nuisance. Um, <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> Some of the great stories about um, uh, about her, I'm maybe getting into the, the Spanish thing a little too much, but it's all you, you really need to know that side of her. Um, uh, as I was saying to Margaret earlier today when we were talking about it, it says, you know, I was, I was just col collecting my thoughts on what I would say about her. The really, I suppose, about three different ways to look at her. There was uh, the seafaring woman, because that's what she had inherited from her dad. Um, her husbands, she had been married three times, and they all died or got killed. Um, and um, the, the men she married, uh, and the men that she fought. And there's one character that stands out that she was the bane of her life, and uh, that was um, a man called Richard Bingham. And I'd like to talk a little about him in a moment when I give you a little overall 
view of it. <coughs> Richard Bingham uh, and um, Grania Whale were kind of like they were fate cast them together and they were two very important men in history but they fought each other um, almost to the death. He died before she did. He died in um, 1598 or 99 I think and uh, I think it was 99 and uh, she died in 1603. She died in the same year that, that Elizabeth died. So she was born in 1530 and died in 1603 and those of you who have been coming to my classes knows how important 1603 is, the Battle of Kinsale, which was the decisive battle uh, in, um, well, maybe in all of Irish history, certainly in more recent Irish history, because it was the beginning of the end, if you like, for the Irish civilization as it had been, the Gaelic civilization. Um, <clears throat> but I, I like to think about the woman herself, what, a per what kind of a person she was. Um, she was married very young, uh, because in those days uh, you didn't meet your guy at, the, at a high school dance. You know, it was arranged, it was virtually all arranged. And the, the higher up you were in society, the more likely that it was that it was going to be an arranged marriage, especially for women. Um, because um, that was a very important part of the way families worked out their differences and stopped each other from killing one another. So for that you need to have a little idea about the big the families in the west of Ireland. Um, and they were chieftains and uh, the, um, the age of the chieftains really ended at 1603. But up until then um, if you lived prior to 1600 you belonged to a tribe, you belong to a chieftain. You were very much identified with who your chieftain was. You, you just couldn't escape from that. That was part of your identity. And also, the land and the chieftain and the, uh, and the name were virtually identical. And very often, uh, the, the name of the chieftain and the area were identical. So people saw you as an O'Donnell or, or an O'Neill or an O'Malley or a, um, uh, O'Sullivan or uh, um, and the, the name that was most prominent south of them in Galway was O'Flaherty and to this day there's every other house is O'Flaherty outside the city of Galway the city of Galway itself is a foreign thing in Ireland uh, most cities are <clears throat> uh, they didn't have. They didn't do the 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 ancient Irish, the Gaelics didn't do cities. They were uh, rural people, um, and it's interesting that a city never grew up on Clue Bay, like it did in Galway Bay, which actually is a complement to the O'Malleys and to the old chieftain system. Now there's a couple of towns there, but there's not a major town like there is in uh, the, the mouth of the Shannon and Limerick and in Galway and so on, which means they kept out the foreigners. And um, it's it's a um, it's, it's as I said, it's a, uh, an indication of the strength of the local um, um, the local tribes people. Um, now <clears throat> the O'Flaherty's are not associated with Galway City. Um, in fact, uh, there's a lot of old stories about uh, the, the, the Normans who, who, um, who set up or who founded Galway um, and made it their stronghold in a medieval city. It's, it's a lovely old city in the center. But it's, it's, it's considered one of the most Irish of Irish cities now. And yet, it's not, it's a foreign thing in Ireland if you go back past 1600, the concept of a city. And the O'Flaherty's um, were forbidden to enter the city of Galway. <laughs> they wouldn't have an O'Flaherty to strut or, I've forgotten what it was, but the, 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 um, there was a, an actual ordinance that the O'Flaherty's were not allowed into, inside the city of Galway. Um, or the McDonough's. So a lot of the, the names that we are familiar with are in and around Galway. 
um, and are quintessentially Galwegian, weren't allowed into the town uh, in the 15 and 1600s. Um, strangely enough, uh, Grany Whale was, and that seg segues me in, if you like, into the probably the most remarkable thing about her personality. She was a survivor. She was an extraordinarily adept politician. She was able to keep her lands and keep her titles, and she was able to protect her sons from being wiped out, and also she got them to be the gentry. They, 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 she, she preserved their, their titles. 